大家好，我是王博老说饭的。Hi, ah,、uh, today I'm going to talk about things about copper, everything about copper, and especially about its process technology in terms of、uh, RDL and TSV. And then the the back or back end line copper, I'm just use it as a reference. We're talking about packaging process, right? So I want to、uh, today I want to summarize、uh, what I know about copper process technology in this field. And then the、uh, the back end line that we commonly know as the、uh, copper ECD electrochemical deposition is used as a reference. And today let's start with this picture. For TSVs, all right, and this picture summarized pretty nicely by Yale, and this is a Yale is a is a it's a consulting company who do a lot of research for all the、uh, banks and you know or the investors who are interested in certain technology and want to buy something, either the stocks or the companies, you know, and they did a pretty good job in summarizing many of the relevant technologies. And here is one of the report come out.、Uh, I think very nice. You can see the red. This this is a brown、uh, copper lines here.、Uh, everywhere you everywhere you see on this picture is the brown line here,、uh, meaning they are copper. And you can see the relative relative size of each layer, and that's real. That's important. Here you have the TSD here. And then you have also uh, the uh, TSV here, and then you have this RDL here. TSV means through silicon via, and then RDL、uh, means that redistribution redistrib layer, redistribution of what? Redistribution of power, pretty much. That's what we're trying to do. And then the、uh, TSV is connecting dies to dies, you know. In a manner that would transmit、uh, proper signals and、uh, functionalities, and that's what it's all was about. And here you have the memory stack and large die here, right? And here, of course, that's what we've been having focus on: silicon interposer. They call two point five T, right? And then the、uh, these are relative tools that TSB edge you have. You know, you can use wet or dry, of course, to edge a hole. On silicon, that's what I'm trying to do, and and then the, you open it up、uh, via reveal. You, you open it up with the, you know, with another process, of course. And then the important thing here, you need to isolate your via against your environment, okay? And that is what we're talking about today, most of the time. And that is、uh, you, you need to isolate it with the dielectric material. And you could use CVD, PVD, or OLD, and you fill it up with、uh, electroplating, ECD, or electrolysis. Depends.、Um, uh, it depends on the size, and then whether you could do electrolysis, meaning that you don't you don't need the charge. You just directly deposit on top in in a, in an aqueous solution. And then you have TSB inspection, charology. That's not the focus day. You know that's、uh, that that will be another talk. Any bonding assembly,、uh, chip to wafer, wafer to wafer. That that's too far away from us. We just want to talk about copper-related process in this picture. That that will be the focus of this talk. If we want to focus on the、uh, on this area, the silicon via interposer with respect to the RDL, and this is the flow look like. This is a simplified. Process flow, or coarse pitch silicon interposer, and these are about five step, roughly five steps. Okay, so you you、uh, create this is your silicon wafer、uh, incoming, and then you have TSV formation, right? And, and after you form it, you you here you form a some kind of oxide. A silicon dioxide is commonly used. If this space is wide enough, you just don't worry oxidize it. Okay. To the best you can, or you deposit it with、uh, tails, something like that. Right? I mean, the, it, 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 the choice depends on、uh, your your baseline history, and then how do you want to solve this problem? The、uh, isolation of copper line with the silicon. So this is silicon, 
both are this is semiconductor, so there's no way you're not going to see that. So it had to be isolated. So this is your isolation, right? And then the pitch is quite large. Is the diameter is sixty micron? The sixty micron pitch means that uh, the, the 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 distance between uh, two uh, vias, the average average distance, all right, is a 180, 150 micron. And then you fill it up. You fill it up, and then you planarize it. Here is a lot of challenges, of course. We'll talk about that later. And then you put the RDO here. Okay. RDO is like thin, you know, the, the, the aspect ratio is small, thin lines, a pattern, thin lines on top of it in this process. And then you, you bond uh, with a micro bond. That's what you do, pretty much. It looks simple, right? But today I'm going to talk about uh, starting uh, with the uh, RTO interposer first, because this this is from just from process guy perspective. It's no, that's my preference. Because RTO pro the process is relatively easier than TSV, which is much challenging. Let's come back to uh, so uh, the RTO is a re dis distribution layer RTL. It basically eliminates bonding because here it could just bond it up. Okay, interposer could bond it up. Micro bonds they call micro bonds. They could make it much denser. So it's it uh, for the high end one. This this density is going to two micron line space. Okay, so the between the line and space is two micron. Very dense. You could do very dense in a way that it redistributes the I O. That's what's trying to do the powers okay to different parts of the chips and miss and make it easier to add a micro bomb to a die. So it's, it's trying try to enable the micro uh, bomb uh, functionality to the top die. So this is for, for the for the top dies. And how do you how do you make this R RTO interposer then? How do you do it? So that's the uh, this is the first this is what I'm trying to focus on for the first part. Basically, this is the flow. I, I uh, skipped uh, one to seven. It's just that's just patterning. Here, let's look at once you pattern your RDL with a little edge, and then you come out. You want to deposit a very thin layer, a thin layer here. Then you do a C layer sputter. Okay, this is a typical they call fan out RDL process. We'll deal with what fan out means okay, in the later. And the later talks, but today I'm going to just talk about how do you form RDO uh, uh, interposer layer, and especially focus on copper only. The rest, let's let's put it aside. There's too many things going on, um, but that's not our focus. Today. Our focus today is simply copper. Okay, the copper C layer. See, copper cannot deposit directly onto a say dielectric layer. It just won't stick. So you need to put some C layer, and uh, for the back on the line C layer is not is it, something else. Uh, there, there's some other technology going on, and it's much more complex because you need to put a adhesion layer. But here you don't need to. You just put a PVD sputter. But why why you can do that? Because the space this, this is rather large. Right? It's very large space, micron size, and then the PVD tool has no problem doing so. It's just sputter copper on top. And it sticks. That's it. And then the copper, uh, a thin and shallow copper plating is then uh, okay. Put it on top. That's in the uh, that's in the uh, uh, step eleven. All right. You put C there, and then you you pattern it. Okay. Pretty much you pattern it. Now you you uh, you 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 put a, a idea of copper on top. This is what we are interested in. And these are pretty much straightforward because you can see it's very thin a layer that uh, at the end of the day that copper tried to do. And this pretty much the technology today can handle that pretty easily. So there's no fancy back and line copper need, which we're gonna talk about later. Uh, back and line copper is what we use in a silicon CMOS uh, formation at the back end of the line with a lot of metal line, which are all copper most of them. And this is 
Here, when I want to stress now the copper C here is PVD spotter. But these days, some people would suggest using uh, electrolytes copper. Uh, that if, if, if you can do it, that's fine. I mean, uh, if your space can do it properly, that's okay. All right. So pretty much here is repeating what I'm saying here in a picture, in, in a more, uh, more, real, more picturesque schematics. The, the K, K, KGD is not KGB, okay? Non-good dyes. Come in with a good dye. Come in with a good dye. And then you, you try to do some work here. Eventually, um, you at the end of the day, this is what you're trying to form. From the non-good dye, you have copper. Uh, and then you have copper. This is, this is also a copper beer. Copper beer inside RDL. Okay. And then how to achieve that is simply uh, your integration steam. This, to me, uh, I call it uh, sort of a dual demonstrating process. Right? It's a dual demonstrating process, meaning that it creates a via and a trench at the same time. Right? So these two, these two, the via in the metal, here is a metal of RTL1 layer with a thin uh, layer on top with a via on the bottom, they are created in one shot. But the patterning, of course, here you can see the patterning, it's, it's, uh, it's, much more, uh, it's much more complex because you need a photo resist and then an edge stop. Here you have edge stop here, this is your edge stop. So here is the one you create your via and trench on um, this approach. Uh, it's also used in uh, Bacon Online. This type of uh, process flow is used in Bacon Online, uh, in a metal one, for example. So you can see that uh, the, what people do here is copycat what they learn from the regular CMOS fabrication. Those process integration scheme, a schema, uh, schema, very similar. There's no difference, except now. You try to cheat the process by by using cheaper stuff like uh, PVD, like uh, uh, electrolytes, as much as you can, because the cost is very high here. All right, it could be very high because the overall packaging is so complex. The cost is a big is very important. So you want to save money in everywhere you you can, but you can see that the dimension here is micron. All these are micron or sub micron size. Is not like a back end of copper, it's nanometer. All right, it's nanometer. It's very hard to deal with. Here is micron size, much easier. So patterning everything, so looking for speed, like for, for cost. So RTO, uh, uh, the process technology wise, it, it's it's challenging, but it's not as challenging as this TUV, uh, as, as TUV, uh, uh, TUV and the back end online copper. Okay. Uh, because it's just uh, a big, fat, a thin, uh, wide layers on top for the IOs. Uh, the challenge is there, but uh, it's uh, much less than the other two. And and then so there are, there are a lot of process scheme trying to deal with uh, RTO first, RTO last, which we'll, we are not going to go to de uh, details. And then the uh, many process related, how do you bump it on a face up, face down? All these are fancy stuff that uh, had you have to ask the uh, foundry what what are their baseline, and then from the baseline it would do some minor tweak to fit your need. So when a designer come in with the, the approach the a foundry. They will work with the foundry to find out what they have and try to implement uh, the, the, the needs, uh, either face up or face down or RDL first. Now, these are high level things I just want to get a, you to get a flavor with. Now, let's, let's come back to uh, this so called uh, copper ECD. For the, this is uh, for uh, copper basal, basal line and a back end line process. And these are fancy stuff because we're talking about here. In here, uh, regular uh, via, copper via, and then uh, that we use in our uh, 
silicon CMOS, their, their aspect ratio are reasonably high. Still, some, some aspect ratio is not like very flat, right? This is a, a trench. It's a trench that need to be filled up. But if you fill up uh, not uniformly, you will have an overhand and you close it. It will have a cavity inside. So that's not what you want. What we want is, is called a super, uh, super fuel process, which means is that you want to fill up things from the bottom up. Okay. Void free bottom up. That's what you do. Someone asked why you, you can just deposit it by some kind of gas. Well, unfortunately, copper does not have volatile compounds. It does like the, the titanium. Titanium. Uh, Thai chloride, right? That's a gaseous compound. You could deposit Thai nitride with it. But unfortunately, copper does not have any. So nature go against us. But it can be plated, it can be uh, uh, electroplated or electroless plated on, the, any, uh, on a given trenches or surface. But to make a bottom-up process work, that's a lot of chemistry. Uh, Novalis did a good job uh, in an initial uh, development of this. They are pretty good at uh, the water chemistry. So they, they figure out how to do it properly. They say, we need to add a lot of additive, you know, such as cooking, right? You, you add a lot of ingredients to make it tasty. So there are pretty much four chemicals, four chemicals that you need to do. Accelerators, suppressors, chloride ions, uh, the... Uh, Levelers, all these had to be worked together in symphony in a way that you got bottom up feel very nicely all the way to the top. And each chemical, each additive did some job, some good jobs to make this happen. So this overall chemistry, uh, we cannot go to do too much details, but uh, the accelerators kind of uh, running things uh, the, 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 the chloride ion, which is uh, containing chlorine, ca uh, containing copper coming in, accelerated by these accelerators, kind of assist and let it try to make it go down, all right? And then eventually copper deposit here, gradually go up and then all the way up. And then the leveler try to remove the, the bumps. There are kind of a lot of copper bumps. You don't do it properly. All these additives take a long time to, to develop, and every company had a, their own uh, special recipe for that. So, but the idea is this: Novalis was later bought, uh, bought by Land Research. So, so now the Land Research uh, produces this tool now. We call this a, a de uh, demosing process. Uh, just like uh, you know, in the ancient time, the demosing process for, for making coins and um, making platings, and you know, it's very similar. And basically, we create a hole and then deposit uh, barrier and copper C. The barrier is the deep, uh, the deep brown line here, and uh, the tantalum nitride, tantalum, many different varieties. It's just to make things stick. You see, the, the adhesion layer means that. The, uh, the copper are not sticking to anything. So you need something first that will stick to the, uh, to the this uh, IOD, interlayer dielectric, pretty much SiO2, all right, in the back of the line or silicon CMOS. So you need to create some kind of sticking layer to stick to the uh, SiO2. After you've done that, uh, this is about a couple of nanometers thick, roughly two to three man nanometers. And then you deposit a copper seed. That's important too. Sometimes you do it by PVD tool, sometimes you do it by other tools. And then you do plating on top. So, so the seed is to stick to the uh, barrier layer. Uh, uh, barrier layer and then adhesion layer. That's what you're trying to do here. For the uh, dark brown one, dark, dark brown uh, line here. That try to form a barrier against SiO2 because copper can go into, if copper sees SiO2, by the way, this SiO2 are porous, highly porous material. You could just go in straight and that's no good, right? 
Once you do that, you short everything. So you had to protect the SiO2 with some kind of he, uh, a barrier layer and adhesion layer. And that's that's the uh, barrier layer C's here. And then you put your copper C layer. There, these are part copper now that, that stick to this barrier layer. And then uh, once you, you do a nice uh, uh, bottom-up fill, as we show in the previous page, here, you do a nice job and fit it all the way up. No voice. Here, no voice. Very nice. Okay. And then you CMP it. You uh, remove this layer, this layer completely. You know, everything removed up. And that's the uh, copper overburden here. This is a copper overburden. And then, and then this adhesion layer, they all have to be removed. Okay, so... That's pretty much the damaging process. And this, I call it a single damaging because that's very straightforward to create a VR like that um, without any uh, any uh, strange shape. But if you but if you look at it, sometimes we need a shape, we need a VR, and then we need to have a different dimension of the copper that maybe go into this as the X or Y direction, this is Z direction. We may, we may need this to go elsewhere. So we need a, a process called dual damaging. This is called a VR first. A VR first, that at the end of the day, we need to create a shape like this. This shape is, is actually the same shape as we have it was done in the uh, uh, RDL, right? It's also kind of a small VR. With uh, uh, with a uh, with a uh, RDL copper on top. This is also a, a so-called VR first process. A VR first process means that it creates VR first, right? And then it has two uh, two two layer two ILD layer. A dual dimensing. Uh, it's much more complex, as you can imagine, because it has multiple edge stop here. One, two, three, one, two, three here, and these are not uh, are not copper lines. All right, these lines are either silicon carbide, or silicon carbon nit nitride, all these uh, very thin but highly resistive uh, material like a withstand uh, the edge. Okay, so here is your. Uh, typical, say, IOD layer, SiO2, something like that. But in between, these are not copper, okay? They are the same color, but they are not copper. They are silicon carbide or silicon uh, uh, SI, uh, CN, something like that. That can create patterns. When you pattern something, you need an edge stop to create a proper pattern. So that's all these stops, all these edge stop means. Yes, so you could form a different pattern with different uh, layers of uh, edge stop. And these are all silicon carbide, for example. Then uh, you follow this process, okay? Follow this process, and you could create something like this. For every step of the way, and then uh, you had to change your edge chemistry, you have different edge, so you have a VR edge, a trench edge. All these are done in a nice manner to to form a to, at the end of the day to form a a two layer copper at one time we could call it two layer copper at one time and then the, this dark purple line is your adhesion layer of course and then you you, you later on you remove it with a C, CMP and these are more complex of course they are. Uh, the uh, key process issues related to there are many process issues related with this. The void cavities, overhangs, dishings, electro migrations, all these are because the size we're talking about here is very small. Okay, we're not nanometer. Some of them these are under ten nanometer for the most advanced uh, technology. Uh, so we are in a scale of nanometer tens of nanometer per se. And when you go into that small size, you will have troubles. And one of the major uh, 
Now I'm going to talk about two defects. Let's talk about CMP defects. Remember, we, we at the end of the day, we, we need to remove it, right? We need to remove the overhang, the, the, the overhang. We're going to remove it with CMP here. This is overburden here. It's called overburden. Uh, and then it can be polished away by CMP. But CMP, if you polish anything with CMP, it comes with the defects. All right. Here they are, unfortunately, many different types of defect, uh, and that come with the uh, copper CMP. And actually, it come with any CMP per se. They all have a similar type of defect. The dishing, the dishing is uh, it's it's isolated lines, okay, and then the uh, erosion. Dishing means that a single big fat guy here, and then you, you try to polish everything nicely like this, right? Everything nicely means that everything, copper, and then its neighbor are on the same line, same, same, same level. But because copper is softer, so when you polish your, when you are CMP, any wafer, you will find the soft material is kind of uh, uh, easy to... Uh, Remove more, and that's the reason that it dished out become a dishing. It's called a small dish here. The shape's like a dish, but if you have very narrow line array that put it together, and everybody removed, this is a big dish. The big dish is called erosion, right? Small dish is called dishing, and the big dish that cover the whole area of dense array that is a uh, uh, that is uh, that's called erosion, and here sometimes uh, you even worse, right? You could total cover loss. Sometimes you just disappear because you want to do too much. It, it adds the dishing and erosion together. It's going to could one day become say some of the area no copper at all, it's complete copper total copper uh, loss. Sometimes you have the copper shots. Sometimes copper being squeezed. If the distance between these two is too uh, too small, and you smear your copper while you CMP it, they could contact. I call uh, pooling. They call pooling, and then you have shorts, and then you have voice interface. That's uh, that could happen later on. It could happen right now, but the most of the time could uh, uh, could form later on. And that's a CMP uh, related defects. Let's look at the uh, uh, let's look at the uh, example of why corners are weak. Okay, why corners are weak? And let's uh, look at this picture, uh, this simulation, uh, nicely. The electrons uh, move in. And then they see the interface here, okay? And that's where the problem gonna see they stuck here. That is kind of a, we call it the, uh, the, the uh, crowding, the current crowding. And current crowding could easily form, uh, could easily form many defects. So the key message here is that things happen at the worst place. At the smallest area, because the same current coming down, right? You have the same number of electrons coming down at any given time. And then you have to go through these small uh, places. No wonder they have a problem that you're going to heat up. Right? You're going to slow down and heat up. And that's uh, where the problem starts. So, with that in mind, let's go into TSV. They are all copper. They are using similar, they are using similar, not exactly 100% a similar uh, chemical process to form copper line inside trenches so via. So what are the major difference? In a typical backyard copper, they are dealing with very small dimensions. Uh, you know, the worst is uh, like one or some micron, right? The metal line, metal level layers. But pretty much the rest is tens of nanometer of backyard copper. These are where the challenges are, especially metal one, metal two, they are very challenging to make everything fill out nicely and then without any problem. 
But now you are going to port this process flow to TSVs. This TSV is about 100% larger. They are micron, 100 microns, something like that. And then with a higher aspect ratio, 10, you know, 18. But these big numbers, and then that make it uh, very, uh, make it too big to, uh, I would say too big to fail, not too big to fail, but too big to fail. And so just, just that's the difference. The difference is not just in terms of the size, but in terms of transport properties. And that's the, that's the message I want to convey. It's much more challenging due to large size. So you have one micron, couple of micron here, and then the uh, 200 micron. And then pretty much what you do here is the uh, typical or TSV, you have to isolate it with SiO2. Some people that are SI, uh, N3, SI, N, uh, N4, I mean, SI, N, uh, it's okay. Whatever that suits your need. And then you have a adhesion layer, uh, just a uh, blocking layer, a barrier, tiny nitride, tentanum nitride, tentanum tie, all the things are, are doable. Tiny nitride because it's good and cheap, right? And you put copper here. So that's pretty much a TSV via look like, right? So this is the picture I want you to hold. But uh, there are some more fundamentals that I wanted to challenge you with. It's a large, much larger size, and then it has a much larger surface area per via. Okay, the surface area per via in absolute number, not in uh, not in relative number, is that it had to uh, the the couple transport inside. Uh, should be very could be very different from those in the ultra thin copper lines, you know, tens of nanometer in the back end of line. And, and in summary, it requires long, longer, much longer deposition time. I, I hope, and then you want it that very quickly so that you reduce the deposition time, and you want to make it uniformly non the the within wafer uniformly all across the uh, wafer very nicely. And then uh, it right now it is the highest cost for the overall packing uh, uh, the, the process technology, and that's why everybody try to uh, uh, try to get it cheaper, get, get all kinds of innovation here, and faster, or try to avoid it from the get go, like uh, like uh, like like uh, the Intel EMIB. Try to say I don't want a TSV, right? So that's what it that would say in their in their uh, newest uh, EMIB process. And here I want to bring you some flavor of uh, why I mentioned the uh, the transport property. Why it's different from the transport property in uh, back end of line uh, nanometers, tens of nanometer size. Here I'll give you an example. If you look at the copper diffusion. Uh, inside uh, your any given bath, all right, your, your ECD electrochemical process. At room temperature is about five times E minus six centimeters square per second. This is the diffusion uh, time for a copper ion to move around. And then you look at the copper ion to move around, and then you try to make things move with a physical force, right? Uh, this this uh, this go back a little bit to what what we mentioned here. Here we try to use chemical force, some kind of additive, all right? Accelerators, suppressors, uh, uh, you know, levelers to in order to to go very nicely void free bottom up feel. But sometimes you say I want to help you a little bit more. So what can you do? because the chemical equilibrium has been established. You don't want to change that. And so what do you do? You can use a physical force by, by some ultrasonic or electronic pulse by putting the charges. It's ion, right? You could do that. Or ultrasonic, uh, shake it around. You shake it around so as that the gradients or then the, the distributions is making it more uniform. That's what the ultrasonic bath would do to you. So this guy did experiment, uh, interesting experiment. Do it uh, so you can see that for different uh, current, you have a different field, uh, different field uh, properties. You can measure it nicely. 
So the uh, there's a different uh, current density, you got different fuel uh, capability. If you do it too fast, you have voice inside. If you do it uh, uh, nicely, you will film no void. So, of course, it's a very long process. But it's just trying to sit. What you're trying to do is to to shake it around as so as you could uh, you could do it. But for the frequency wise, if you look at the time constant that I'm trying to calculate here, is that the time constant for the copper ion on the surface, all right, and the Vs, which is uh, I assume it. 20 micron and 180 micron. If you put this number in, right, it's just the uh, thickness square times times 4D. This is a typical uh, time constant calculation from the diffusion. You can see that it's 0.2 seconds to 20 seconds. So it's it's like seconds. So the, the time scale for copper ion to move inside is, you can imagine, it's seconds. It's not uh, as that's the time scale you should keep in mind. It's meaning that uh, you better use ultrasonic, not megasonic. Megasonic is much higher frequency. So I would assume that megasonic is not appropriate for this uh, shaking around. And uh, so this is just, just, just wanted you to feel that dynamic. You could do a physical force, applying an external physical force through vibrations of ions either by sound or by electronic pulse. And then you shake it around, you change the way it bottoms up there. Okay, so this is uh, just a sidekick. Uh, once you get a feeling of copper ions inside TSV, right? And a typical TSV formation, you can see, uh, this is uh, what we had mentioned before. You have a seed, okay? Oh uh, yeah, sorry. You have insulation, you form insulation and then barrier. Insulation is SiO2, and then barrier is your tiny nitride, and your C deposition, and then your copper plating, right? So this is probably what, what you do. And then the, the rest of the process, eventually you will form, at the end of the day, you will form like this. And this is a typical GSV formation. And then the, and then its relationship with RTO is here. So the, the copper will touch the RTO layer. Here, these are actually still important too. Okay, and up you will have a couple bar, and you see all these layers, right? That detail. Okay, the uh, this insulation layer, the first you see, right next to the uh, insulation layer, the all call and that's insulator, right? Is your uh, is your adhesion layer? You want something to stick, something stick to the. Uh, uh, your uh, silicon, I mean, uh, insulator, insulator is IO2. And then after that, you need a diffusion barrier because you still want to protect this adhesion layer because adhesion layer may not be that good a copper barrier. Copper can penetrate through adhesion layer and go into your insulation layer and then uh, attack in silicon. No, that's a big no-no, right? So you have those uh, adhesion layer, bear, diffusion barrier there, and then finally you have a copper C layer. So this process actually is quite complex, but this complexity is exactly the same as the backing online uh, copper that we mentioned earlier. They are exactly the same, except some minor differences. The differences is in here that you need to add a T TSV dielectric layer, right? That's that's this part, this uh, dark gray area, this part. And this part is what we uh, have introduced in the very beginning, right? That the uh, the TSV has uh, this one, isolation layer. So you could do CVD, PVD, or LD, right? So pretty much uh, CVD and LD is a major, uh, CVD is a major one. Uh, LD probably coming later, right? PVD one, I will not do it, right? Because the it's not easy to form uniform across the, across the inside, unless this aspect ratio is not important. Okay, and and if you look at one pure recipe from Global Foundry, the pure recipe for uh, TSV dielectric layer is isolation is two hundred nanometer thick um, 
some atmospheric CBD. This is a very high pressure CBD, very fast. A quarter is not that good. Okay, tails. And then you have, and then desiccation. Because when you form a CBD process, the material itself is not dense enough, meaning that it's highly porous, density is low, and it cannot protect people, you know, other material, other, other elements uh, going uh, going through you, attacking silicon, which you, you try to protect. So you need to densify a high temperature in you, is what people are trying to do, right? Heat up the wafer for a couple hundreds, and then uh, even the thousands if you can, but of course not thousands in this case, you have the, the, the dye there already, but you cannot do that. So, and as high as you can to densify the uh, the the 200 nanometer SiO2 deposited. And then you cap it with uh, PCVD, uh, this plasma enhanced CVD. It's a better quality. And then the, for moisture absorption, okay, you, you want to protect, it could be silicon nitride, I would imagine, or better quality SiO2. Silicon nitride could do a better job in here. So all these are. Uh, Going into this dielectric, this dielectric layer, this insulator layer is kind of a is not an easy thing already. It's a, at least a three step process in your POR flow. Okay, and people find out that if your TSV is less than three micron in diameter, then you have a problem. The CBD process will give you a problem, so called overhang. Overhang means that. Uh, Overhang is that it would uh, it would form a, it, it, this is type of overhang here. This is a type of overhang here. Eventually, it will close, all right. Which means that they're thicker on top, thinning on bottom, and then leave a hole inside. So this overhang is the part that uh, when your size of the TSV is less than three micron, you could be in trouble. Then the LD process is needed. LD process, of course, is much, uh, much more uh, slower, much more slower, but it provides better conformality, right? That's what LD is for. But that at a cost. Everything comes with a price, right? So that's pretty much uh, the, the TSV process wise that we uh, that we uh, that we can share that I can share with you. And let's talk about the failure. All right. I, I said that TSV is too big to, not to fail, it's too big to feel. The, what I meant is that uh, a surface, there's so many a circle, each one year you have such a large surface area, right? Because every side is microns. So if you don't do a good job in a surface and, and then say any defect here, the defect A is from silicon edge. When you drill a hole through the silicon, and then you have put uh, your insulation, your insulation there, you still have defect there. You could have defect left. Or, or uh, something else, copper C layer missing due to surface pit. Maybe you have some dirty stuff. You can't clean it. If a clean had a problem, then the copper C will see that defect, right? And then you will have, you cannot form a proper field. So these are called module, meaning that is related to the formation of via itself. If a machine is not clean, your process is not clean enough from incoming silicon edge or yourself, right? So you have all kinds of defect inside, especially on the surface of the copper uh, TSV, then, uh, then, then you have problem, you have failed. In the future, you have failed related to this. I call it uh, your failure and module level. But there are some problem is failure at integration level, right? Which means that like like for instance like uh, like cracks. You initially did a good job, but sometimes afterwards, for the module per sector, you didn't see that, right? You 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 develop your recipe, and then you see everything fill up nicely. But after some time, it start to crack, right? So initially, for example, initially you did very nice, no problem. And then later it cracks. What's that about? 
And this defect is called this defect is called copper shrinking. All right, any crack here, you open up a crack, and eventually it fill. And sometimes uh, uh, the, the, the 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 it happened at the bonding at place. And when you bond something, you heat it up. It's a thermal bonding, right? You heat it up. All the and then uh, there are some uh, so copper pump a uh, cup uh, a copper pumping issue is that. Sometimes uh, it would bulge after the device sintering, right? right? It's when you, the, uh, the copper deformed, and then the, sometimes it's thinning down, all right? So all of these are because the copper is squeezing uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the other material. Why, why would it squeeze or being squeezed by someone else then? That's because a large, Coefficient of thermal extension coefficient difference. And that is a killer, right? That's a major killer for TSV. It's fail from thermal mechanical issues. Because the copper, uh, you, can, you look at the copper, uh, the CDE, the co coefficient of thermal expansion is 17.3 ppm per degree Celsius. ppm means 10 to the minus 6 parts per million. Right, and then the silicon is uh, two point six. It's uh, six times SiO two. That's the barrier. That's the uh, insulation layer. It's point point five. It doesn't. It doesn't change any. It will not change easily with temperature. So, it's far less than copper. So all these are just similar materials. So you will crack. You will eventually, uh, due to the thermal process, uh, thermal mechanical cohesion or interfacial crack and form. At the edges, the edges or the interface are naturally has a lot more stress. And you're going through some kind of a thermal process. You heat it up all the time, right? You have to heat it up during your reliability test, or especially in your operation. You always heat it up and cool down, heat it up, cool down. The thermal cycling, which induces thermal mechanical forces, that will create cracks at every corner you can imagine. So you don't do it right, that's uh, then you have problem here. The stress induced people take it is around uh, different temperature you use could go about one fifty to you know you know two fifty uh, megapascal. These are enough to make things happen. Okay, make things happen. For example, this we fail after TC of a thermal cycle. So this uh, this report says that here is uh, original here you after some like original this this crack forms and then because of defect inside here you have a defect inside that's uh, that's kind of this defect here this is a defect here and so you have a problem get get problem with the copper field so you you don't feed it up right you have a defect here and then you lost the uh, you lost the copper C. In here, you lost copper C. Uh, I don't know how big is that, but anywhere without copper, the copper cannot grow proper. So eventually, you have, a, you have some missing. Or you have the way you touch it, TSV touches RDL. All these are weird, uh, the, the high stress here, and then you, you, you have a problem. You, you can no longer adhere to the RDL problem. So this is a could this will the failure can happen? Okay, remember when we uh, talk about uh, TSV blending? Here is the uh, oh, not this example. Here, uh, RDL. Oh, no, I should give you a better example than here. The TSV. All right, and then the uh, and then RDL over here, RDL touching the uh, touching TSV. All these interfaces are where the weakest links are, and that give you a problem uh, when you're connecting these two together. And this connecting these two together initially could be okay. This this could be fine in the beginning, but you do a thermal cycling. A thermal cycling creates thermal stresses. So you could expand, shrink, expand, and shrink. And then if they did initially they don't didn't have a good adhesion between these two layers, then they will break away. 
So you have to make sure uh, when you deposit uh, your TSV on top of RDL, the interface problem has to be very nice and you have good, good bonding between each other. If you don't have a good bonding, then when you do some cycling, it will fail. So here's here it's uh, 255 degrees Celsius. And then, uh, you know, there's a, uh, oh, this, I'm sorry, this one's a, is a here is a EM fail. But it, this could happen for the thermal cycling as well. Here, I give you an example for electron migration fail, meaning that current goes through it because the current crowding here, current crowding, this, uh, review this. When the current goes through here, right? Current crowding goes through here, meaning that there's a lot of electrons uh, going through here, and then you're doing thermal cycling, eventually, see, it crowds up, it crowds up here, it crowded, very crowded here, and that's where the problem is. And then the, So these defects, uh, as you can observe here, by the edges is from the uh, lattice mismatch. I mean, sorry, the, uh, the the CT mismatch, the coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch. That's the key that happened at the corner because that's where the stress are concentrated. And you can imagine that the in here. Every design are different, right? Every product are different. So they have a different aspect ratio, different size of the die, everything are different. So this means that uh, pretty much the defects are product dependent. So you have to uh, imagine uh, that the customer come to a boundary, they have to give their designs, right? So these are DL and copper, all these defects all these defect-related failure mechanisms had to be dealt with at the very early stage. All right. Of course, you could say, I have one commonality. The layout is per uh, periodic in nature. And then I could probably calculate, calculate probably the stress here. That's true too. That's true too. So you had to come with a design that is uh, not exactly defect-free, but at least your approach. You want to fix stuff from the beginning, from the get-go. So that's called design for experiments. Okay. Design for experiment means that, I'm sorry, design for manufacturability, D, uh, D F N, meaning that you want to you want to you want to solve the problem that's before it happened. It's kind of a forecast, right? You have a you have a crystal ball, you could do that. And it turns out that the silicon CMOS process technology does uh, have that capability. So you could, the, the idea is that the cost of change in a design phase is at least, you know, before you go to the product. That's, of course, the common sense. What I mean is that many failure can be reduced from the get-go if you know what you're doing, right? So that's, uh, that's a, DFM was for, you'd be a good idea to design out those failures if possible. We did this a lot in silicon CMOS flow, especially in CMP dummies. CMP dummies, if you look at the CMP dummy we mentioned before, if you design something, so this is very, if this distance is very large, then you have tons of problems. Or a lot of things are very dense and then some are isolated, then you have a problem. So how do you solve this type of problem then? You just say, I want to make everything look the same. Say, what about, what about here? Then I create more dummies, okay? I create more dummies that are going nowhere, but with the same material inside, I could reduce the problem of this, okay? So that's what dummies for. So they would, pretty much change the pattern density, make everywhere on the wafer similar pattern density. Then you have a much less problem like this. So this problem cannot be exactly removed, but can be uh, significantly reduced by, by putting dummies everywhere. 
Apple dummies, your dummy, that. So everywhere looked the same to a polisher. That's the idea, the Kotan. But uh, can you do dummy with the TSV beer? I don't know. I, I haven't seen that yet, but it's a good idea. Uh, and, and that uh, people try to do that, say, you know, I could uh, pretty much avoid a pattern like this. I want a pattern look that regular. TSV pattern had to be as regular as possible. You don't want to because it, your circuit design, some weird design, it ends up like this. All right, these are uh, no, no. You want, it, you want it to be regular, repeated by itself in a constant manner. Then your TSV, uh, I mean, this is called TSV placement, early in the design phase. Then you could reduce the mechanical reliability problem later on. And of course, all the designs uh, has to be uh, captured in some kind of software. Um, people are doing that right now. Uh, Semitrack is doing that for you. Of course, you pay them money, say, is my design, or you come up with a software that can help people to arrange that. If, if they have a freedom to change the TSP position, then they should do so. Okay, that's a high level mindset we should have. And in terms of foundry, how they developed a new uh, 3ID, this is roughly a PDK de delivery versus the test vehicle cycle. Okay, and test vehicle cycle. Uh, uh, placed on the multi-project wafer, uh, that's the, uh, that usually a foundry will let you have some wafers, you do your test on that, and then so this is roughly in terms of time, uh, you run through the factory uh, with uh, t uh, test vehicle one, test vehicle two, and then three, this doing a way that uh, that would share with uh, that, that uh, foundry as you can do or they're doing themselves, like TSMC, right? The cobalt developed like this. And that's roughly the, the idea in a real foundry. Now the calendar of TD development will look like from a 3D IC perspective. Okay. And one of the famous example is the test vehicle called Bali. Right? That's a 28 nanometer uh, Zydings, uh, uh the uh, product, they have a, they have a top die, that's a FPGA die, and then they have a silicon interposer with this kind of a, a lot of bombs. This is a, a C4 bomb, a large bomb, it's called C4. The micro bomb is very small. Right? And then they have tons of them. And then they, they have 20,000 um, uh, uh, bombs, micro bombs here. And then this is to test the, the bond, micro bomb. Of course, it's connection with also uh, could be connection with TSV and all that kind of nine yards, and then we we'll test it with this kind of test vehicle, okay, TV. And this uh, people said that is how TSMC developed its cobalt using this type of uh, or even this test vehicle, okay. And so all they're trying to do is to use this test vehicle, find out what the defect related problem, and try and then change the process in a way to come up with a perfect uh, solution, right? So this is everything uh, that we talk about related to proper, okay? We talk about baseline, uh, a baseline using our back end line copper, and then the RDL is a simpler copper process, and the TSV very challenging in terms of the stress, a thermal uh, mechanical problem, uh, even electron migration problem. And then that's similar to the back on line problem. But when things go into smaller and smaller, and then the corner becomes sharper and sharper, problem starts. All right. That's all I have today. Thank you very much.